Hey, good morning, Peerless Road Church. This is Pastor Adam, and I'm so excited that you've chosen to be with us today for another PRC Encounter Online. Now, we chose to go back online because it's safe and it's healthy right now as we have a tremendous spike in cases here in Cleveland and Bradley County. And so today, I'm actually filming from on location in Jekyll Island, Georgia, home of the world's second largest driftwood beach. It makes for some beautiful pictures for your family if you'd like to come get it. But today, we're going to center our sermon around the movie Castaway in our summer movie series. And so as we look at that, we're going to employ biblical truth. Now, if you've never seen the movie Castaway, it centers around a character by, played by Tom Hanks, who is a FedEx executive, and then he is involved in a plane crash and ends up on a deserted island for many years. And he has to sort of survive through that. And never saw it coming, much like we never saw the COVID-19 pandemic coming through 2020. But as we're here, we're so excited that you're here with us and we're looking forward to employing biblical truth around this movie. Now I want to remind you, pay attention to the PRC website because that'll be where we are able to identify how quickly and safely we can get back to in-person services at Peerless Road Church. And so there'll be updates throughout this week and you'll see seating requests once we come back And because we're going to continue to space out. Masks will probably be uh, requested as we come back in to help for the safety and health of others. But as we get ready to come back, I want you to continue to pray for us. Pray for our church leaders all around this county. Pray for our government leaders. Pray for our health care workers. We're not, we're not, we are not out of this yet, but we do have a helper whose name is the Lord. And so I'm so excited. I'll come back with you in just a little bit as we get ready to come from on location here at Jekyll Island. God bless you, and I'll see you soon.
Peerless Road Church, welcome back to the time in the Word together. And I want to just have you turn in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 121. It's one of the most powerful passages of Scripture that I love to read. And several years ago, it was made into a song by the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Many of you can probably quote it, but let's go straight to it. I will look into the mountains, or the King James Version, what I learned saying was, I will look into the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip and he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. He will not make your foot slip, the, the word says. In fact, it goes on to say, the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. But this morning, as we look into this word, as we begin to look at the summer movie classic, I want to go back to verses 4 and 5. It says, he, Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade 
at your right hand. And as we go into this word today, I want you to understand right from the beginning that we have a savior. We have a redeemer. Job, when he was going through everything that he was going through, he looked and he said, my redeemer lives. You see, as we go through this 2020, many of us never thought that we would be going through what we're going through, especially for as long as we've been going through it. And that's the amazing thing about what happens in life is that sometimes we don't expect what's coming, but God does. And we don't see the consequences that are coming from it but God does. And as we, we want you to understand, as we look at Psalms 121, before we get into the book of Esther, so go ahead and turn there, is that immediately what happens is in the book, in the first part, it says, I will look up into the hills from what's come with my help. What that implores to me is that the psalmist must have been in a low place in his life. The psalmist must have been in a place where he needed encouragement, where he needed to encourage himself. He was probably, when I'm looking up, and especially if I'm looking up into the hills, that means that I'm probably in a valley. It means that I'm in a place of lowness. I'm in a place of that I didn't expect to be. You see, a lot of times we're going about life until something drastic happens that causes that to change. In just a few minutes, we're going to see a movie called clip that sort of is at the very beginning of the movie Castaway, and it's and he makes a motion he's trying to give a motivational speech in fact let's go to that clip right now because in just a moment you're going to see we're going to come back and we're going to look at that you see let me set the stage for you tom hanks is is played and the title of his character is name the name of his character is chuck and he's trying to give a motivational speech to his employees in Russia. And he sends this passage from America and he tells them, and, and this, I sent this passage, package through FedEx because that's where he's an executive from. And he's, li he's looking at them and he's telling them the power of the clock. In fact, he makes this mo motion that we live and we die by the clock. So take a few moments and let's open up the, the movie Castaway by checking this short clip out played by Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway. Take a few moments, I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back, Peerless Road Church. And so one of the most uh, interesting statements that was made in that clip was, we live and we die by the clock. In fact, many of us in 2019, we're living and dying by the clock. We have routines and schedules and work schedules and so many things and school schedules and everything that was going on. And then all of a sudden, 2020 hit, March 2020 hit, and April 2020 brought us to our knees as an economy, as a nation, as a world. And you see, as we found ourselves in low places. And this morning, I want you to, to do exactly what Psalms 121 said. He says, I will look into the hills for whence cometh my help. I will look up. That means we're going to have to probably throughout these last several months, we've had to encourage ourselves. We have to encourage ourselves to not look down at everything that's going on and not keep our head held down, but to look up, look up unto the hills from what's come with our help. Our help comes from the Lord. The first point that I want you to understand this morning, I'm going to use a clip from the, from the movie in this saying, is that we live and we die by the clock until something happens to break the clock. You see, we live and die by what's going on in our life until something happens to break the clock. And the amazing thing about that is oftentimes it could be a situation or it could be a circumstance or it could be something that came unexpected. But do you know who broke that clock? That's right. It's the Lord. It's the one who broke heaven and earth. You see, sometimes we can go about life and we can be going about things until God identifies and says, hey, I need to change something in your life. I need to bring about a change that is going to not just break you or not something, that's, but something rather that's going to mold you, something that's going to prune you, something that's going to make you better and stronger. And so we see this in the book of Esther. The Bible tells us, and I'll sort of set the story, that at the very beginning, there's this king named Xerxes, King Xerxes, and he has followed Nebuchadnezzar and he has in, in control of 120 provinces. And he is throwing a big party. And at the end of the party, he brings all the royal officials and governors and different things of the provinces. And at the end, he's whining and dining them. And there was no, there was no uh, stop to the expense. Everything was going fine, throwing a party. And then he brings his wife in, who was a beautiful woman named Vashti. And we understand that he wanted her to come in and to do probably some type of vulgar dance to, to sort of do it. And she's like, no, I'm not going to be a trophy wife anymore. I'm not going to do because I, I respect myself more than that. And so we don't know what happened to Queen Vashti, but we should know that she's never mentioned in scripture before. We don't know if she was banished, if she was killed, thrown in prison. We have no idea. 
But then, so in chapter two, the Bible says that, that King Xerxes puts out a, an order. To, he wants a new queen. And so in all 120 provinces, he orders a beauty contest. And the most beautiful women are to be brought to him. And he's going to pick one to be his new, his new wife. And so here's where we pick up the story. And so in, in Ex Esther chapter 22, in Esther chapter 2, beginning at verses 21, the Bible tells us that this young Jewish girl in one of the providences whose parents have, have died, we don't know why, and her uncle Mordecai is taking care of her. And so all of a sudden, he, she goes through that and he tells her, and, and she, the Bible says she's a very beautiful girl, a very beautiful woman. And so when we go through that, all of a sudden we see something that's taking place in her life. And so we see that now the king was attracted in verse 17 to Esther more than any of the other women. And she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. And so he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all of his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts and royal liberality. You see, as we look at that, and then the Bible picks it up in verse th one through three of, of chapter three. When the virgins were assembled a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, but Esther had kept secret her family background and nationality, just as Mordecai had told her to do. For she would continue to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done as he was bringing her up. During the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Benthana and Teresh, two of the king's officers, who guarded the doorway, became angry and conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. But Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who in turn reported it to the king, giving credit to, Morde giving credit to Mordecai. And when the report was investigated and found to be true, the two officials were impaled on poles. All of this was recorded in the book of Annals in the presence of the king. Now that's important because I want you to notice something that all of a sudden here, here goes Esther. She's going about life. She's been selected the king and then Mordecai hears about an assassination attempt on the, on the, on the king, but it's never recorded. It's recorded in the king's annals, but he doesn't get any credit. Somebody else gets the credit. And so as we get ready to go, and that was at the end of chapter two. And so I want you to read the whole book of Esther because it's powerful. But you see, as we set the stage, he's going about life and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we are introduced in chapter three to this new person named Haman. Now, Haman is the second in command, and, and some scholars believe he probably took credit for the assassination attempt of uh, being spoiled. And so the Bible tells us that Haman is the fourth person in the story that we want to focus on, and that, and that he is immediately put in as a prime minister. And that he gets the credit and he becomes the second in command. He's given a house as a prime minister right next to the king. And so he's given so much authority that when he walks out and when he goes out to the city, people begin to bow to him, sort of, again, pulling you into the story, except for one person, this guy named Mordecai. And it infuriates Haman. And he can't believe that this guy named Mordecai, he goes and talks to him. And when he realizes that he's a Jew, he wants to get rid of him. And not just get rid of Mordecai, he wants to get rid of every single Jew there is. And so the Bible picks up in chapter 3, verses uh, 5 through uh, chapter 3. And it begins, after these, that Haman, after these events, King Xerxes honored Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agatai, elevating him and giving him a seat of honor higher than all of the other nobles. And all the royal officials at the king's gate knelt down and paid honor to Haman, for the king had commanded this concerning him. But Mordecai would not kneel and pay him honor. And you see, this wasn't Mordecai trying to be disrespectful. Mordecai was a Jew, and he identified that he was only to bow to one person, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And that if he was to bow down to Mordecai, that that would give honor to, to the Lord, and he wasn't about to do it. But the Bible says in verse 5, that when Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of only killing Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way to destroy all of Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom 
of Xerxes. And so Haman began to put in a, an, an idea of killing all of the Jews. And so he put a, a clock, he put a date on the calendar and the clock was set. And at that moment, the Jews were gonna live and die by the clock. The countdown had begun. A day was set because what Haman would do is that he would go to King Xerxes and he would begin to go and tell them, hey, King Xerxes, when we annihilated Jerusalem from Babylon, when we killed all the people who were worthless and we kept the inventors and the smart ones and all these people, we kept Mordecai, but hey, we've, we've gotten everything out of them that we can. Let's kill them all. Basically, they're worthless to us. He had an idea. The enemy, the stage was set. The plot was thickening and the clock was running. You see, at that moment in time, here comes Mordecai. And although he had he had had secretly saved the king's life, you got to keep your finger on that because the Bible says it was recorded in the king's annals. It was put in the history books. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. But we live and we die by the clock until something happens to break the clock. And, we, and we'll get to that part of the story in just a minute. But the Bible tells us that Haman begins to go and he begins to make something known. And the clock was set. The clock is counting down and it, it breaks, it breaks uh, Mordecai's heart. He returns to the king's gate and the Bible tells us that he begins to break his heart. In Esther chapter four, the Bible says when Mordecai had learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes. He put on his sackcloth and ashes and went out into the city wailing loudly and bitterly but only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every providence to which an edict, the order uh, to which the edict and the order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and wailing. Many laid in sackcloth and ashes. You see, in all 120 provinces, Every Jew was going to be killed at this certain time of the year in a certain month, and the clock was ticking. You see, we live and we die by the clock until something happens to break the clock. And I want to go back, and that's going to lead us into our next, until our next passage, into our next point. We may feel as if 2020 has caused us to be cast away from what we know, but the unseen hand of God is orchestrating it all. And so I want to go further into the movie Castaway and show you. And so what happens is in this movie is that he, the, Tom Hanks or, or Chuck is living and dying by the clock and he's on his way back home. He's back on a FedEx plane and, he, and all of a sudden something happens. Remember, we live and we die by the clock until something breaks the clock. And so to set the stage, he's on a plane and a, a horrible storm happens and it takes down the plane. Everybody is killed but him. The packages are scattered throughout the ocean. And Tom Hanks finds himself on a deserted island, just much like the, the, the place that we sort of find ourselves in, a place of isolation, a place of devastation. We're cast away. And so here we are in the movie. This has been several years, and Tom Hanks has managed to survive at this moment. Let's check the next clip because he's so lonely. He's looking for some type of community, that, and this is where we'll pick up. Pay attention to this next clip. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Peerless Road Church, I hope you enjoyed that clip. And so what it reminds me is that it almost feels like 2020 has been exactly that, that we've been cast away. Some of us have been cast away, not to a remote island, but cast away to our homes or cast away to our, the, the the safety of our own homes. We've done, Some of you haven't been back in church since March. That's a long time. Some of you haven't even, maybe are just now going to stores and there are some, yes, who have not even gone out at all. They've had people bringing them groceries and different ones. And whatever side of the spectrum you're on, that's completely fine. Because I want to remind you the second point. We may feel as if 2020 has caused us to be cast away from what we know. But I want to remind you that the unseen hand of God is in it all. You see, they go back to the book of Esther. Esther's in the palace and it feels as if Mordecai and the rest of the Jews have been cast away. God, where are you at? You brought us into Babylon and yes, we're in captivity and we're going through all of this. But now in the 120 provinces that we find ourselves, now we're being cast away. It feels as if God is not in it at all. It feels as if God is completely absent from the picture. But I want to remind you, he's not. 
The unseen hand of God is in all of it. And so as Mordecai sits at the city gate, feeling cast away, feeling cast away from the hand of God, there's an unseen hand of God throughout the entire book of Esther. I want to go back to this, but I want to remind you, the book of Esther is the only book in the Bible in which the name of God will not be found. That's right. You don't see the name God found from chapter 1 through chapter 10. It's not there. But don't mistake it. God is present in all of it. God God is present through the intertwinings of every passage and every scripture found in the book of Esther. And God is intertwined in every second of every day, of every hour of our, of, of our lives. And so every single thing in our life is controlled. Now, some of us, well, there's some people in the world who think I'm crazy for the next statement that I'm about to make. But I'm one who believes that God is in every aspect of our life. There's nothing that happens just by chance. There's nothing that happens by circumstance. I believe the hand of God is orchestrating every aspect of mine in your life. If he knows the number of hairs that are on my head, I promise you, he knows every second of my life and he's orchestrating everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, the mountains, the valleys, the 2020s, the 2019s, the 2021s. He knows what he's doing. He's orchestrating it all for him to receive the glory, not for us to be given credit. Mordecai didn't get credit, but God's going to get credit for everything that goes that takes place in his life. And so I want to go back to the book of Esther in chapter two and chapter four, because the Bible says, I want to go back down to verse 12. It says, when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your family will perish. Who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, day or night. I and my attendants will fast as you do. And when this is done, I will go to the king. And even though it is against the law, if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And so as we look at this passage of scripture, the Bible tells us that Mordecai feels cast away, but he also identifies that God has a person in place. God already has somebody in place to begin to take care of the careful position of his Jews. And remember, I'm telling you, the unseen hand of God is in all of it. And as we go through 2020, as we're going through this COVID-19 pandemic, we feel as if we've been cast away. There's no hope. There's no hope from the government. There's no help from the medical professionals. There's no one that can bring an end to this pandemic. But I'm going to tell you that our, the maker of heaven and earth, God is in all of this. And he is using healthcare professionals. He is every day giving us advances because he is giving us the knowledge and the ability and the path to victory. But I'm going to tell you, I will look into the hills from what's come with my help. And so some, many of us were going through this and maybe you've been sick, maybe you have it, but I'm going to promise you, your help comes from the Lord. Don't lose heart. And so in Exodus, in Esther chapter 4, verses 12 through 17, we pick up the story. Mordecai sends a word to Esther. Hey, go to the king. Plead to him for the life of the Jews. And Esther, we often talk about her as a woman of courage, but we see in this, this young, beautiful girl was not full of courage. She was full of fear. And I want to remind you from the beginning of this pandemic, and you've heard me say it week after week, that fear paralyzes, but faith mobilizes. And so uh, at this moment, notice that fear is paralyzing, is paralyzing Esther. She's afraid to do something. But notice, as, and, and all of a sudden, that she is mobilized by Mordecai. She's mobilized by a person of faith because Mordecai has seen the hand of God, not only on his life, but on Esther's life. Who could bring an orphan girl from a providence and put her as the queen? only the hand of God. And I want to tell you, look back at your life. Who could have brought you from the places that you've been, through the valleys you've gone through, the mountaintops that you've stood on top of? Who could have done in your life what has been done at this point? Only the hand of God. So be encouraged. The hand of the Lord is on your life. Be encouraged today. And I want you to understand, the place that you're in, from the circumstance to the consequence, is set up by God for such a time as this. Wherever you find yourself in, 
for such a time as this, you're here. It could be that God is using you to encourage your neighbors. God is using you to encourage your community or to step up and to be your family. Wherever you're at, the place where you're at, from the circumstance and even to the consequence, is set up by God for such a time as this. But but I want you to remember that, that that Esther wasn't courageous. She had to dig deep and find that courageousness. She had to find that courage. Fear paralyzed, but faith mobilized her. And she was able to look and say, okay, that courage every day is every moment, every second she began to think about it. And she realized, yes, I'm here. I'm in this place for such a time as this. When she began to ponder on the words of God and the words of encouragement spoken by somebody else, she began to ponder on that and faith began to rise up. Can I tell you, you have the words of life. In the word of God, you have the words of life. You have the words of life for your family and more importantly, your friends. And you have the words of life for yourself. As you ponder upon the word of God, as you turn upon the word of God to encourage yourself, let faith arise. Let faith arise in you and come up with the same encouragement that Esther said. If I perish, I perish. Because guess what happened? It changed everything. And I want to remind you as she begins to go and we'll get into to the plot in just a minute. And so for just a few moments, I want to look at Esther chapter five, because this wasn't a chapter where she had the, the, the person that was full of courage to go and to tell the king boldly, somebody's trying to kill my people. Let's stop it. No, she goes before the king and he notices her and he looks at her and she's standing in the courtyard and her beauty catches his attention. And she brings him in and she, he extends her scepter and she's allowed to live. And he says, hey, what do you want? Anything you want, I'll give to you. And so if that is she, she was a person of courage in that moment, yet she was caught between courage and fear. And that's where many of us have been caught in this process. It's not a bad thing. Stop allowing the enemy to keep you in a place of paralyzation and allow faith to mobilize you. In fact, Esther begins to say, uh, uh, King, hey, hey, can we have a banquet? She didn't ask for freedom. She asked for a banquet. And she says, hey, will you, will you bring the man Haman? Bring him there. And so the passage of scripture in, in chapter five tells us that, that she has a banquet and, and that prideful Haman goes home that night and begins to tell his friends and his wife, hey, I have favor. I've gained favor with the king and the queen. I was the only one in all of the kingdom that would sit there and that would have a, a banquet with the king and queen. I am so special. And he thinks that that, that he is all powerful. And yet, guess what happens? As he's leaving the banquet hall, he sees Mordecai at the city gate and he is enraged and he can't believe that Mordecai, don't you know who I am? I just had dinner with the queen and the king, yet Mordecai would not bow. And the Bible tells us in Esther, in Esther chapter five that he began to set up a place. He was tired of Mordecai and his wife and his friends encouraged him, build a gallows and let's, let's hang Mordecai. Let's get this over with and so throughout that night, the Bible tells us that, that Haman begins to build a, a gallows. Now, keep in mind that the that the, the prime minister's house was right before, was right before, right beside the king's house. And we're going to get to Mordecai and we're going to get to, to that place in just a minute. But as we get ready to go into the clip, Haman is building a gallows 75 feet high for one person named Mordecai. Remember what we said, we live and we die by the clock. And so now Mordecai's clock, the time has, somebody has taken the hand of the clock and moved it all the way up to the 11th hour. We're getting to the 11th hour of his life. And we're gonna see that unseen hand of God working in his life. And so as we're looking at that, I want to remind you that as we sit there and we're looking and, and fear paralyzes, but faith mobilizes. The hand, unseen hand of God is on it all. And let's go back to remember what Psalms 121 said. The, the king can't sleep. The king can't sleep. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. But I want you to look at this next clip because the unseen hand of God is in everything. Let's turn back to the final clip for Castaway. I want you to see an unseen hand at work in this next clip. Let's check it out and I'll be right back with you.
back PRC and so we see this in this movie clip where we come to the final passage of scripture that we want to look at today and the final movie clip from the movie Castaway for the summer movie series and here we see that Chuck played by Tom Hanks has finally made a man-made raft and he's got off the island and he's in the middle of the ocean he's been there for several days he's lost his best friend Wilson who has become his only community and so many of us have felt like we've lost that same thing we've lost we've been cast away in this pandemic We've, we've been cast away from our church. We've been cast away from our community of faith. We've been cast away from our friends and from our family. Birthday parties haven't been the same. Anniversaries haven't been the same. Life hasn't been the same. We feel cast away. And we almost feel as if we're on our, in our own sea, that we're just wandering around by ourselves. Who will save us? Who's going to help us? And I want to remind you what Psalms 121 says. I will look into the hills from what's cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. I'm going to keep saying it, but I also want to focus in on that few on that verse just a little bit down below that because it says the king who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps now in this in the video clip that you just saw you see a ship getting ready to pass by uh, Tom Hanks and and he's a literally about to miss the help he's about to miss a ship that can bring him for rescue and all of a sudden guess what the unseen happens. You don't see a whale pop up. All you see is the water being shot, shot up from the whale's pump. And so all of a sudden he wakes up and he stands up and he sees, and he sees this ship and he starts waving them down, of course, and we know he's rescued. He's no longer a castaway. And I want to turn to, I want to start, turn to, to Esther chapter six. And I want to remind you the last point that we see, although you can't always see it or feel it, God is making a way. God is working for your behalf. And so whether you see it, whether you feel it, and let's take it a step further, whether you're sleeping through it in 2020, God is working all things together for you because he loves you. And so in Esther ch chapter 6, remember, the Bible tells us that in, in Exodus chapter 6, Esther chapter 6 verse 1 that night the king could not sleep so he ordered the book of the chronicles the record of his reign to be brought in and read to him now keep in mind what has just happened Haman is getting ready to kill him he's having a 75 foot gallow uh, built to, to hang Mordecai the next day he's going to run in and he's going to ask the king who gives him anything he wants to be the ability to be able to kill Mordecai but remember what happened in Esther chapter 2 remember how the unseen God is at work. I told you, you're not going to see the name of God in the book of Esther, but you're going to see him working. And even though you can't see it, and even though you don't feel it, and even though you can't even read it, the hand of God was working. Because remember, Mordecai was the one who saved the king's life. And if you want to talk about how the unseen God is at work, do you, do you really think that when they open up the Chronicles, it just happened to fall on the record of where he's about to read Morde what Mordecai had done? The Bible says that in verse 2, it was found recorded there that Mordecai had exposed Bethana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. Do you actually think it was just happenstance that when they open up the, the history books to read it because the king couldn't sleep and I bet he couldn't sleep because of all the noise that was taking place right beside him. All the banging and the knocking and the, the nails going into gallows. No wonder he couldn't sleep, but it wasn't that. It was because the king of kings was keeping the king on earth asleep and can I, from sleeping. And so he's trying to get some sleep. He's trying to get some rest and relaxation. And so he orders the history books. Mr. Bagley, no, not, not offended. He's a history teacher. But when I'm trying to go to sleep, give me something boring. Give me something that'll make me go to sleep, right? And so they bring in the history books. And this is where the unseen hand of God is at work. Because can I tell you, if this is a history book, and, they, and I just, he says, don't worry about starting from the beginning. Just open it up. Just start reading from somewhere and here comes the unseen finger of God as soon as they begin he they they open up the pages and then all of a sudden the finger of God is moving them to start right here and they start reading about the day that Mordecai had saved the king's life and then in, verse, in Esther chapter 6 the Bible says what honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this the king asked Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. And the king said, who's in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole that he had set up for him. And he said, Haman's in the court. And so again, 
Haman is a prideful, egotistical jerk, if we can use that. And so he's, he's coming in to talk to the king about killing Mordecai. But guess what? Here comes the unseen, protective hand of God moving on Mordecai's behalf. It's now 11.55 on the clock, so to speak. His time's about up, but here comes the hand of God. Here comes the one who breaks the clock when we're living or dying by the clock. Here comes the king of kings moving into his life of Mordecai. And he asked Haman, he says, Haman, what would you do to someone who the king wants to honor? And that prideful, egotistical Haman says, oh, he must want to honor me. I can see the story playing out in his head. So king, if you want to honor somebody, I would put the king's robe on him and then put him on the king, uh, the king's horse that, that the king has ridden on and ride him through the street saying, this is the man that the king wants to honor. And in a fast forwarding of the story, guess what happens? The unseen hand of God is at work because now Haman has to bring in his enemy, Mordecai, put him on a horse, put the king's robe on him. And Haman, the very one who wants to kill Mordecai has to walk Mordecai through the street saying, this is the king, this is the man that the king wants to honor. Can you imagine how humiliated he was? How embarrassed he was? In fact, the Bible goes on to tell us that he was embarrassed and he runs Mordecai home and he runs home and says, can you believe what happened? He didn't want to honor me. He honored Mordecai and he was enraged all the more. But guess what happened? The, again, the unseen hand of God, that courage that was building up and Esther. Another 24 hours builds up and she finds herself full of courage and full of faith. And it's time for the banquet. Haman can't do anything. Mordecai goes back to sitting at the gate and all of a sudden here comes Haman and he comes to the banquet for a second night. He's going to wait till the next day. But guess what? The hand of God has his number. It's Haman's 12 o'clock hour. And guess what happens? The Bible tells us, I'm going to fast forward in the story. Go read it. It's a phenomenal story. But the Bible says that Esther, again, the king asks Esther, what do you want, sweetie? What can I give you? And she tells him, my people are about to perish. There's an evil plot to destroy my people. And it's been set up by this evil man named Haman. And the king is enraged. He runs out because he's so upset. And it leaves Haman and Esther there. And Haman is scared to death. He knows something bad's about to happen and he's pleading with Esther and in fact he throws himself on the couch or the bed that where she's at and then guess what happens it's the it's a beautiful story it's amazing it, it couldn't be written down except in the Bible the king walks in with the man another man on his wife's bed and he says are you about to abuse her right in front of me and he sends him out and the very gallows that Haman has built for Mordecai he's hanged immediately can I tell you that no matter where you're at it's the unseen hand of God that is at work in your life. And whether you can see it or whether you can feel it, the hand of God is working in your life and he's working in my life. In COVID 2020, and this no matter what you find yourself in, in our cultural division and the medical division and the thing that's attacking the whole world, I promise you the unseen hand of the maker of heaven and earth is working all things together. So don't be worried. Don't be paralyzed by fear, but encourage yourself with the word of God. I will look into the hills from what's cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Let's take it a step further. I will look into the word of God. My, the word of God is my strength. It's my redeemer. My redeemer lives. I will look into the word. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the living word the maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ himself. Let me pray for you today. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you that we're not cast away and we're not pushed aside and we're not forgotten about. But Father, you have your hand upon our life. You have your hand upon this year in 2020. You have your hand upon us in this COVID-19 pandemic. Well, Lord, whether we feel that we're in a desert, deserted island or we feel like we're in the middle, surrounded by people, yet we feel like we're still alone. God, we are not alone. You are with us. The unseen God is with us. The unseen maker of heaven and earth is with us. And you are watching over us. You're watching over us. You're protecting us. And even if we get sick, you're healing us. You're our redeemer. You are the one who redeems us from a life of destruction. Lord, you tell us in your word that you will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm have destroyed. Father, there's nothing that comes in our life that you are not in control of. And so, Father, I ask you right now, 
that you will watch over your people, heal your people, protect your people, encourage your people, remove the worry, remove the stress, remove the anxiety with the word of God in Jesus name. I'm so excited to be with you today, and I'm so thankful that you've chosen to be with us. Keep tuning in to peerlessroadchurch.com. There'll be more information. Stay connected to the mobile text alerts or the one calls. If you're not connected, call the church office at 423-303-2680, and we'll be glad to keep you connected. I'm so glad to be here with you today. God bless you, and I'll see you very soon, hopefully in person. Stay connected. Stay stay alert. Stay healthy. Stay living in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.